section six tie rods and part of the servo saver. Um, you don't want to weaken these parts at all. And you literally do feel when they sort of had a happy point. And make sure you start them very straight. Let's clear the excess of wax. And then this goes on the back. So you make that part up. Now, my little tip for doing these, they say 37.5, so I will do these at 35, the first, the short one. The reason I do this is, is it's easier to, when you're adjusting the steering, to wind it in, than to wind it out. If that makes sense. Because when you get to a point of these, when you wind them up, they go together. And when one gets stiffer than the other, it will wind in the other end. And if it gets too much, um, actually I said 35, ignore me, it's 37. You want to make them longer. So I'm going to make them 39, not shorter, make them longer. Because it's easier to um, adjust them in because they wind together when you do the towing because when they say set the slight towing because the why, reason you have a towing when it moves forward the suspension has all got movement and it straightens the wheels up perfectly and then the other one which is 58 I'll do 63 And like I said, it leaves me that leeway now for when I do that part. Near enough. But like I said, that's the way I like to do it. Because sometimes you can adjust out things just that little bit better. You know, if there's a slight discrepancy, you can actually straighten the uh, steering with these. Not thinking, I should have checked. Done on the wrong side. I'm really having a good day today, but I'm enjoying it. But this is the trouble with chatting and not glancing at the manual at the same time. And now the steering's correct. So that completes section six. Now, stage seven is setting up the servo. We're going to add a, the servo part. Uh, they give you seven to ten. There's a few different ones, but it's uh, J7 for us. And it tells us what screw. Well, actually, it's what screw suits the servo is more the issue. So we'll turn the radio on. Turn power on for central. Well, I thought we'd have power. I was already switched on. 
things are sent to test us. And then we'll put the steering on as central as possible. But they're saying two. They're saying two point six. Well, what? That's if you're using a Tamiya servo. I'm pretty certain these are three millimeters. So into my screw box for a some spare mush head ones. Which is the length, and it is a free, so that should be spot on. We'll wind it in, and that's not too bad. That should be, yeah, that's definitely less than the thickness of the plastic, but we've got a good depth going in. So we'll put this on. So this is the thing, you can never get it dead centre. That's the best I can get it. So we'll drop screw onto washer, washer in. Tweak it. Then adjust the steering trim. Go the steering spot on. What I'll do is at a later date, like I said, I'll adjust the steering to those. We've got it like all central. And if you look, we'll go close, nice and central, and we'll go from that. But that completes stage seven. Now, section eight is put in the they call it axles, but it's axles and hub. Um, where these two parts bolt together they recommend putting the screw through that holds the um, axle just to hold it while you tighten up and line everything up and then there's a self tapper as well which goes through the whole lot so what I think I'll do is do the nuts and bolts section first um, take a side like this um, drop the screw through and put the nut the other side so you can see just put it on And that's what you should have and then like I said drop the shaft in and then all you've got to do is tighten the screws up and I'm going to swap ends All I'll do is I'll do one side and I'll do the other half of camera because you don't need to see it twice. But that's lined up the hole through the center. And then it says take this piece and there's two, so make sure you get the right one. 
well, this is K1, and we'll slide the axle in. I'm going to push that in for now. That holds the axle in place. And then we've got to fit a ball joint. And that goes, it's easy to guess because it goes from the highest part down, like so. So you end up that part, and the theory is you should pull the screw out and line all this up. There we go. And we gently screw this in. And that's what you should end up with, one half. And then the other side is just a mirror of that one. But I'm double checking, everything is correct. So once I've done the other one, this will complete stage eight. Now we're on to part nine, which is a they say attaching the front uprights, which in a sense is the wishbone parts. You've got a H2 and a H3. Um, basically the H2 is longer. That's the best way to recognise them. Um, so there is a warning. When you screw in this, this piece, you just wind it to the tip of the nylock and no more. So you must remember that. So again I'm going to do one side. So we'll take a long one and we'll put it in the bottom. And we'll put this through. And that's like I said we put the lock nut on. Wind it up. And keep winding until it's just a If you look, you can see it's just right to the very, very top, barely. Just very fractional about. And then you could take the shorter one, which you go the opposite way round on the bump stop. Just left a bit too much plastic there. And the little knobbly bit goes inwards, so you've got a knobbly bit out and a knobbly bit in. And use this larger screw and use the use a flange nut. They tell you to use um, a spanner the other side, but the thing is, I don't know whether you need to. Yeah, you do because being truthful, it's, it doesn't tighten to anything. It actually fits loose. Change that. I'm double checking. I've got it correct. Actually, I'm doing this side, but um, no, I had the correct side. Um, yeah, it's right way up. This seems very loose. So you've got to you have got to tweak it with that. You'd have thought they'd have had that fit to length, so it just tightens up. But that is loose. Strange. 
and that completes one side so I'll just do the other and we'll be at the end of stage 9. Here we are on to stage 10 and what I'm going to say is um, you've just got to slide the suspension in and put two bolts through with lock nuts and then you screw on the lower part with a washer and the step screw and then it tells you to clip on the steering. Don't because you're only going to have to take them off when you adjust the steering regardless so leave them off until you do the adjustment to the steering and then clip them on. So we'll take a side. Which one have we got? We have definitely got driver's side. So what you've got to do is slide in the bottom. Put one of these bigger screws in. It will eventually line up. And then fit the lock nuts to the other side. What a pillock. Now, in step 10, uh, we fit the upper, well, we fit the wishbone suspension, you fit the lower arm, and then you fit this hoop to the front with a step screw and washer. Now, the thing is, um, they say clip the steering on, don't bother because you've got to adjust it so there's no point clipping them on to unclip them again later on. Right, I've slipped the first bolt through the, the lower wishbone and then all we've got to do is to get the nut on the other side which is probably going to be easier from upside down Easy with thin nose pliers this bit. Just wind it down till it stops. Fit the other side. And if you're doing it like this, you've got to think sort of a little bit backwards. Just getting it fiddled into place. There we go with that. Now we can flip it and do the screw with the washer. There we go, the lower bits 
can now connect it. And that completes stage 10. Now section 11 is fit, fit in the front damper straight, uh, a couple of bolts and a couple of lock nuts which hold the upper wishbone as well. So it will be a case of through the first hole, get the wishbone in place, line it up and it will be, should go all the way through. Then repeat the other side. Line up the suspension as best you can. Of course the first side is easy. I think I know what I've done wrong. I've put the suspension the wrong way round. A little foo path. Yeah, what I've done is um, that explains a few things. I've got the wrong end in the wrong part, and it makes a huge difference. So I couldn't work out why it was binding earlier on one side and not the other. The way it's got these little nubs, it sort of tells you you've got it wrong. So let's get this to line up. Wiggle it, and we're in. Surprising, a little mistake, and we make all things wrong. But now we've got it all working right. But you can see why they tell you they set the steering arms slightly forwards. Look at the movement in the hubs. So that completes stage 11. Right, last bit of, of bag A is section 12, which is fitting the cover on, and the front body mount. This is three screws to hold this bit. two down at the sides And then this goes from the top, like so.
and that is complete section or bag A completed up to stage 12. So in the next video or the next part, depends how it's edited, we start on the gearbox.